Yo, what's going on, you guys? It's your boy Ben Mahari here. We represent Mahari Nation Sports Podcast. Much love to the entire LDBC and the basketball community. You understand what I'm saying? Don't miss basketball conversations every Friday night, 9 p.m. Central Time. It's where we discuss basketball-related topics, news, debates, and everything else historically relating to the world of basketball. You understand what I'm saying? For all the new subscribers and all the new people coming in, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get all the latest notifications when I start dropping some videos and when I do my own live streams. You know what I mean? And also, spread the word about the channel. Make sure to share this video and share all my other videos on your social media platforms and try to spread the word. All right? So, with all the pleasantries out the way, let's get down to business here, shall we? Now, what I wanted to discuss about here today is about this very this, this subject of this video here, and, and that is the Miami Big Three. And my perspective on the Miami Big Three is this: the Miami Big Three are under are underachievers, and I'm going to explain to you why why they are underachievers. Okay. Now, when I talk about this team, I look to them how their star power should have won more. All right. Now, people will play to must say, well, they made four straight appearances to the NBA finals and won two championships. You know, how could they be underachievers? That is it. OK, because they made four straight trips to the finals, but they only won two. You know what I mean? Because when you have the star power like LeBron James, Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh on your team, you should have won at least three straight championships or even four. You know what I'm saying? Because at that time, the Eastern Conference was not as strong as the West. And so if you were making the finals four straight seasons, you could have won at least three out of four or at least four straight. All right. Now, I wanted to talk about exclusively how the big three was formed. OK. And here's a little twist to today to about it as well. And it all goes back to 2006. Um, Carmelo Anthony in 2006 signed a five year, $80 million contract with the Denver Nuggets. OK. Which meant that in twenty after twenty ten that that uh, Carmelo Anthony was going to be a free agent along with LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. Okay, the original plan of that whole big three complex was is that LeBron James and Dwayne Wade were going to be together with Carmelo Anthony to form a big three wherever place they were going to be. It was going to be in Miami. Okay, now you fast forward to twenty ten. Okay. Anthony became, becomes a free agent, right? And so what happened was is that to, to, uh, Carmelo Anthony was, was going to be a free agent and had an opportunity to join Miami in the Big Three because that was the original idea. But Carmelo Anthony decided on, on that offseason what he was going he'll sign, he was going to sign a three-year, $65 million uh, deal with the Denver Nuggets. That he that his contract was able to extend to 2015. Melo admitted even years later that it was the worst mistake, the worst professional mistake that he has made because he would have had a better chance to win and probably play somewhere else with and probably play to win a championship with those guys. But it wasn't meant out to be. Melo only stayed half the season with Denver and it ended up being traded to the New York Knicks. All right. So Bosch was slated in as the third wheel, but Bosch was not in the original plans. All right. But and what, but the Mel idea went out the window and Bosch, you know, filled in. And then LeBron did his infamous the decision episode where he announced that he was going to take his talents to South Beach. And then the rest was history. By that, mo by that move alone, this team was supposed to be a team that was supposed to win multiple championships. As LeBron said in that huge concert uh, meeting with the, with the Miami fans. But the team was always going to be on constant scrutiny. If they didn't win a championship in that first year, it was going to be considered a failure. And unfortunately, in the 2011 NBA Finals, it was one of the biggest failures in NBA history. All right. If you when I look back to that 2011 NBA Finals, that Miami team was supposed to sweep the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavericks had no business beating the Miami Heat that year. All right. But. That the Mavericks were hot at the right time. Dirk Nowitzki played the best basketball of his entire Hall of Fame career. All right. And Jason Terry, Jason Kidd, and uh, Sean Merritt were making big buckets. And Deshaun Stevenson was coming off the bench hit hitting threes. You know what I mean? They got hot at the right time. And also Tyson Chandler was playing superb defense at below the rim. You know what I mean? But the thing is, though, what really cemented my, you know, my 
uh, my uh, my uh, dis my just my basically my little level of respect for LeBron James was lowered to a to a major dis uh, extent is when he is when he played poorly in those fourth quarters. LeBron had four straight fourth quarters when he averaged at least two points or less. I mean, I remember one game. I think it was in was in game three or game four where he only scored like four to six, four to like eight points that entire that entire game. How do you sit there and try to justify that when you're the best player in the world? All right, I just don't understand it. When you're the best athlete in the world, when you're the best player in the world, you're supposed to dominate and take over in those moments. And unfortunately, LeBron did not did not do that. He took very bad shots. He wasn't aggressive. And the only guy that was aggressive was Dwayne Wade. I mean, Dwayne Wade was the only guy that was consistently being aggressive. And LeBron wasn't. And, and it turned out to be one of the biggest upsets in NBA Finals history. You know what I mean? When the Mavericks beat the, beat the Miami Heat in six to win their first and their, and to date, only NBA championship. So that's where the scrutiny, you know, kind of went into its climax. By the time... The 2012 shortened lockout season, you know, commenced. The Miami Heat knew if they didn't win a, a championship this time around, that they were going to be the most screwed. They're going to be remembered as a team with all the great talent, but didn't achieve the championship. All right, and they almost got knocked off again at the hands of their own, at the hands of LeBron's nemesis, the Boston Celtics. And I remember from that series how. Paul Pierce was out shooting LeBron James in that series, including that game five where, where Paul Pierce hit the three and basically was talking trash to the Miami Heat bench and to LeBron James' face. I remember from that shot, I said to myself, yeah, Boston's going to win this series. There's no way that LeBron, that, that Miami was going to cover this because I really questioned the mental toughness of the Heat. All right? But from that game six, I give LeBron credit. I give LeBron credit. He played the best game of his career. He showed that killer instinct that he should have had throughout the majority of his career. He showed, he played like his legacy depended on it. And he had 45 points and played the best, you know, game of his career. And in and a, and a time where he needed to be at his absolute best, at his absolute beast mode. And I give him credit for that. And they ended up closing out the series in seven games. You know what I mean? And then they went on to defeat. You know, the Oklahoma City Thunder in five games, in which I will tell you that if Russell Westbrook was not worried about his own stats, if he wasn't worried, if he was doing his job as a point guard, I believe that the OKC Thunder would have won that series. But, you know, the rest was history. And then the Miami Heat won their first championship of that big three complex. Then you fast forward to 2013. All right. They went on this amazing uh, winning streak. I think they won at least, what is it, like 27 straight games? Uh, let me check it out real quick, just real quick. That famous winning streak. Yep, they went on a 27-game uh, winning streak. They were only at least two wins away. They were at least about two win. They were about one, two wins away from breaking the LA Lakers' all-time uh, winning streak. That was set back. That was set back in the uh, in the 1971 season when they went on when they went on to win. Uh, actually, no. I take that back. They won 27 straight. The Lakers won uh, 33 games. All right. They were only about six away from breaking that streak. And unfortunately, that, that didn't, that never commenced. They lost to the Chicago Bulls um, that season. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that, that series in 2013, you know, was a pretty much a back and forth series. You know what I mean? There were times where LeBron was were burning back to his old habits. The Spurs were making big plays. They were doing a good job defensively on LeBron James. They even put old slow Boris Diaw on him, and then somehow it worked out pretty well. And you reflect back to that 2012-2013 season, how Greg Popovich decided to set out all of his key starters and pretty much put in uh, his backup guys into the in that in that nationally televised game against the Miami Heat. Now. Pop of which was criticized for it and ended up being a heavy fine for it. But in the process, he saw that there were some key matchups that he was going to exploit if when in the event that they make the heat in the finals. And one of them was putting Boris Dia on LeBron James and saw that he did a pretty good job of forcing LeBron to take jump shots. And that game six, it was working out pretty well until LeBron decided, you know what? F this, I'm going right at these guys. And LeBron performed well in that fourth quarter until he made some key mistakes. If it wasn't for Ray Allen making that tying three from the corner, I don't know. History would have been totally different. And you have to 
explain some of that with the Spurs from the key turnovers from Milan, from Milan Ginobili and the key misses from both Ginobili and, you know, uh, Kawhi Leonard. And that would have totally changed history. But then they ended up winning, winning game seven and winning their second straight championship. Now, 2015, it was pretty much a spec. It was pretty much some speculation that LeBron was going to return back to Miami, and Dwayne Wade pretty much by that time was becoming more injured riddled, and age and attrition was starting to affect Dwayne Wade to a certain extent. And so, that year, um, they won. They only won 54 regular season games, you know, by way behind the Indiana Pacers that won down to win 56 games. You know, understand what I'm saying? And you know, they had to scrape and claw to get back into the finals. But eventually the Spurs figured them out and pretty much beat the crap out of them in five games. So when I look back at that time, there were a lot of things that I that I felt that about the Heat that really disturbed me. One of which was how LeBron always had to dominate the ball most of the time. Now they had a proven point guard in Mario Chalmers that did, was sometimes can be effective and sometimes it can be very erratic, but the fact that LeBron was always the guy holding up the holding up the ball a lot, it made me question about how can LeBron play off the ball. And there were times where LeBron, you know, would play would not would not play off the ball, and sometimes would try to dominate the ball a bit too much. And also, there was sometimes a bit of a an overconfidence uh, factor with that team. They knew how good they were, but sometimes they didn't play with aggressiveness. They didn't play with the seriousness that really. They needed to when they were really that much of a dominant team. Part of the reason why the Bulls are one of the greatest teams in NBA history, along with the 86 Celtics, is that they knew how dominant they were. But they knew that if they didn't come in at their absolute best and every single night, they was going to get embarrassed. And I felt that the Heat sometimes didn't always play up to their skill set and up to their supremely dominant talent. And there were times where they would even put up bad performances, where they were actually out to win, or they let a bad team, you know, let them have a good night against them. And sometimes I felt like it came down to the killer instinct of LeBron. Now, I know how dominant he could be, but sometimes he just, there were times where LeBron just did not have that killer instinct. And it's still showing up today. Because to be honest with you, that big three team, now there could have been a lot of different factors. If, if the Bulls, you know, didn't lose Derrick Rose that knee injury. Maybe they would have been in the mix, but I don't think they would have had enough firepower to beat the Heat. You know what I mean? The Pacers, you know, had a really good chance, but this couldn't put it together. Okay. Now, I just felt that the Heat should have should have won more. They should have won at least three straight championships, or even or even best four straight championships. But I really felt they they underachieved. You win two titles in four years. I mean, it's like you could have won more. You obviously could have won more. And they just, and I just felt they were an underachieved, you know, team. You know, I give them the respect of what they were, to, they were able to achieve winning back to back titles. But I felt that they could have won more. They should have won more. They could have won at least four straight championships or even three peated. You know what I'm saying? And, it, but it goes to show you how difficult that is because the commitment that you have to make to win three straight championships. Is just unbelievably hard. I mean, just ask Michael Jordan and ask Kobe Bryant how hard those, you know, feats are. They're it's extremely difficult. And for those teams to achieve the three peat, you know, it takes great commitment and you have to be at your best every single night. You know what I mean? Because there's gonna be teams out there that want they're gonna try to knock you off your perch. And I felt that the Heat sometimes during their time didn't play with the amount of, of killer instinct that it was necessary to put the fear in all of their opponents. And there were times where I felt that the Heat, you know, let bad teams have a good night against them or the game would get close. And then afterwards, they would have to take a miraculous miracles from their from one of the members of the big three to pull out and, you know, get those W's. You know what I mean? And I and also another thing, Chris Bosh is it was so disrespected. He is still disrespected to this day. I mean, the People forget how talented Chris Bosh is, all right? Chris Bosh was the main guy in Toronto. He was the face of that franchise for so many years. You understand what I'm saying? Chris Bosh sacrificed a lot. He sacrificed, you know, all sorts of personal achievements in the promise of a championship. And the for a guy that is 11-time All-Star, not to be able to get the recognition that he truly deserved is just unbelievably disrespected. 
You know what I mean? He he belongs in the Hall of Fame, and I believe he will be in the Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? But I just think at this particular moment, I think it's going to take a long time before Bosch gets the recognition that he deserves. But that's how I just feel about the big three. I just felt that they were an underachieving, you know, champion. You know, if you can guys understand what am I going with this. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Do you guys think that Miami underachieved during their time in the, in the early 2010s? Or do you think that they basically were an overachieving team that succeeded what they were able to do? But I'm going to keep an eye on what, the, what you guys say in the comment section. But let me know what you guys think. And I'm going to continue to drop more videos in the future. Peace.